It's not every day that one atheist accuses another of cowardice for refusing to debate a Christian. It's even rarer when both are Oxford dons. Richard Dawkins, the world's most famous atheist, is facing that accusation because he has turned down an offer to publicly debate a man regarded by many as the world's leading defender of Christian belief. Professor William Lane Craig is a philosopher and a theologian with two PhDs from leading universities. He's the author of 30 books and hundreds of peer-reviewed academic articles. But Richard Dawkins has repeatedly refused to take him on in debate. I asked William Lane Craig to describe his most recent rebuttal ahead of his upcoming speaking tour in the United Kingdom. Dawkins wrote back and said, I've never heard of William Craig, and while a debate with me might look good on his resume, it wouldn't look good on mine. And besides, I never debate a religious person unless he's at least a bishop or archbishop. And so simply sort of blew away the invitation. So that was, I guess, the genesis of it. And since then, a number of different groups have tried to set up um, debates or dialogues between us, and he's always been consistent in declining to do these. And in connection now with this upcoming tour in October, they reapproached Richard Dawkins. Uh, uh, apparently several organizations did, attempting to have a debate, and he's been resolute in um, saying that he won't do it. It is the case that Richard Dawkins has debated religious believers who are academics, including, for example, John Lennox, the Oxford mathematician. And yes, though you would be too modest to say this, you are highly regarded as one of the world's, perhaps the world's, leading Christian philosophical apologist. So that has prompted some people, including an atheist philosopher at Oxford University, Daniel Kame, to accuse Richard Dawkins of cowardice in refusing to debate you. Do you sense any cowardice here? I think it would be inappropriate for me to comment on his personal motivation. I don't know the man, and so I I just don't speculate. uh, the, The facts are simply that he refuses to do it, even though, as you say, this seems inconsistent with his policies in the past. He has debated pastors. He has debated cultural commentators. He debated Pastor Ted Haggard in one That's on what one I occasion. heard. <laughs> but he won't debate perhaps the the most um, armed example of Christian apologetics, if we can put it like that. Well, I think it would be a very good dialogue. You see, we I have published criticisms of his work already. It's not as though we fail to interact. I, I have written published critiques of his arguments in the God delusion. And so far as I know, he's not cared to respond to these either, even in print. So it's not just a matter of not wanting to be involved in a rhetorical debating situation. He's been completely unresponsive to the criticisms. How would you approach a debate with him? The way I do the other debates that I've been involved in, they are always academic Uh, forums that are conducted with civility and respect. They're not like political debates or debates like you might see in the House of Commons. These are academic forums where one concentrates on the arguments and counter-arguments, the truth of the premises of those arguments and objections to them, and not on personalities or ad hominem attacks. So there would be no reason to fear any sort of rhetorical trickery on my part. I don't engage in that sort of thing. So if I can put you on the spot for a second, if you were to debate Richard Dawkins, give us a sense of what your opening statement might be. Well, what I would do, frankly, is no surprise. I would defend the five arguments that he has criticized in The God Delusion, including the cosmological argument the teleological argument, the moral argument, the ontological argument, and I would try to show how those are um, cogent arguments for the existence of a metaphysically necessary, transcendent creator and designer of the universe, and that his criticisms of these arguments simply misfire. So there would be no element of surprise (laughs) from my end of the argument. I've already published these criticisms, and that's what I would 
uh, offer in the debate. Do you think you can prove that God exists? Well, I think that depends on what a person means by the word prove. Popular culture, the word proof has a connotation of absolute certainty, uh, mathematical demonstration, and certainly I'm not claiming anything as strong as that. I would say that what I offer are good arguments for the existence of God. That is to say, these arguments make it more probable than not that such a being exists. Are you optimistic, Dr. Craig, that you might actually get a chance to put these arguments to Richard Dawkins face-to-face? No, I, I'm not. I think he's been adamant in refusing to do this, and I would be, frankly, rather shocked if he were to change his mind at this point. Does this bother you, that he won't debate you? Frankly, no. Uh, <laughs> I think that the expectations on me, if the, such a debate came off, would be so high <laughs> that if he even just managed to survive people would see that as a victory for him. So I'm not plumping for this debate at all. This is not something I've sought to do. This is something that other organizations and persons have tried to, to put together. I, I, I'd welcome it, but I'm not seeking it. Well, if he I won't be in the least disappointed if it doesn't come off. If he won't do a public debate with you in a room with an audience, we could suggest to him, if you wish, that he debates you on Sunday Sequence on this very program. Yes, I'm quite open to all of those suggestions. You've been listening to Everyday Ethics from the BBC with me, William Crawley. For more information, go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash podcasts.